Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to walk you through the hero's journey cycle. Uh, this is a Prezi which is up on the blog. You can actually walk yourself through it if you just if you don't want to bother with me, little old me. But um, I'm going to give you kind of the quick rundown through it, um, just for a, kind of an extra little bit of an exercise here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the videos that I, I included. So if you want to watch the full videos, again, you're going to have to go through it yourself. But let's let's get going here so what we have here is a cycle that um, has been created to describe how many heroes in literature kind of develop throughout a story and it was first um, conceived of by this uh, professor Dr. Joseph Campbell um, who is really well versed in a lot of forms of literature and he really found out that there's a lot of common things that most heroes do when they go through a story. So common that almost every hero goes through this cycle of development. So, there are a couple different models of the hero's journey cycle. They all involve some kind of a circle involving starting in the regular world and going to a, a special world. Um, so they share a, a lot of commonalities. Some are more complex than others. Here is a more complex one. Um, here is a kind of a simplified version that we'll probably actually be more closely following. And I'm actually going to, in this presentation, going to go through kind of a hybrid of the two samples. Again, just keep in mind that it's going to be a circle and we're going to go all the way around it for our hero to develop. So while we're talking, we're going to be going over um, many different heroes here. Uh, hopefully you've all seen these movies. I'm thinking you probably have with the exception of The Matrix. That was more popular with my generation than, than yours. But um, So here are our example heroes that will follow through the cycle. We have Mr. Anderson aka Neo from The Matrix. We have Luke Skywalker from where he first appears in Star Wars Episode 4. We have Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings, um, specifically the first movie in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Harry Potter from the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, again the first movie in the in the series, and of course Katniss Everdeen from the Hunger Games. So they'll be our heroes, which we'll kind of be tracking through this cycle. So the first step on the cycle, we're going to be going in a counterclockwise motion here, is going to be our hero starts out in the ordinary world. There's a little picture of the Dursleys for Harry Potter. That's his ordinary world. Um, so you probably got the hint that the ordinary world is some place where um, your hero just doesn't feel like they fit. They're a little ill at ease. They're not treated well. So um, you have Luke Skywalker living on a boring mo moisture farm. Neo is working at a dead-end office job. Frodo's hanging out in the quiet shire hearing about his uncle's adventures. And Katniss uh, is living in a pretty poor District 12, uh, living under the harsh rule of the capital. So in each of these instances, the hero is not quite satisfied um, with their current living situation, which will help spur them on going on to an adventure. The next step in the cycle is a call to adventure. There's something that kind of forces them to, um, to consider leaving their ordinary world. Here we have Luke Skywalker seeing the uh, message from RTD2 of a beautiful Princess Leia in need of assistance from an Obi-Wan Kenobi, which kind of spurs him to figure out what this is all about and how he can possibly help. Uh, we have Harry Potter receives the uh, flying invitation. Um, Katniss's sister, Prim, is chosen for the Hunger Games. Neo follows a mysterious computer message telling him to follow the White Rabbit if he wants to learn about something called The Matrix. And Frodo's told by Ga Gandalf that he must take the ring of power to Mount Doom to be destroyed. So our hero is called to adventure, um, but they don't necessarily feel like they're quite ready for it, um, or they, they, they feel that it's not their place to do that, or they're frankly quite scared to leave their ordinary world, even though they're unsatisfied with it. That's this next step here, the refusal of the call. So it's a moment where the hero has a, a moment of doubt or hesitation, or they really feel the weight of this difficult decision. Um, sometimes, as in uh, the Hunger Games, it's uh, not as a clear-cut refusal. Obviously, when Prim was volunteered 
Katniss went right forward. But the author was sure to make us feel the weight of that decision. It was obviously something neither one of them wanted to do. Um, so there was some kind of hesitation, even if just for a moment, even for Katniss. Um, but our other heroes here, they definitely also have moments of hesitation. Uh, Neo actually, when he gets the call to adventure from Morpheus to, to escape um, by jumping off of a building, um, or actually, uh, yeah, getting out of the office building window, he chickens out and he um, just turns himself into the authorities. So the next step in this cycle is the meeting with some kind of mentor figure. All right, this mentor um, is also called an ancient mystagogue, if you want to use some really cool big words. Um, Frodo met Ga Gandalf, Neo meets Morpheus, Katniss met Haymitch, Harry met Dumbledore, and Luke met Obi-Wan. Um, generally, especially if, if you can tell from Obi-Wan Kenobi, Dumbledore, and Gandalf, they're usually some kind of old wizard um, type figure. They're old, they're wise, um, but not always, but uh, generally that has been historically the case. They, um, their job is to help the uh, hero with some kind of special knowledge. Sometimes they give them magical gifts or even a talisman, um, which is kind of a, a magical object that will help them on their journey. Now, now that they've kind of refused the call, they've met their mentor, and they've kind of decided, yes, they'll go on this journey, they're going to cross the threshold, which means to kind of cross into um, the doorway of the land of adventure. Um, so they've actually moved into this magical or adventure world. They're no longer in their ordinary world. Um, Harry got onto the train to Hogwarts. Frodo left the Shire. Uh, Luke left his home planet of Tatooine, Katniss left District 12 for the capital, and Neo, um, he, he awoke in the, uh, the real world and found out what he thought was the real world, which is in fact his ordinary world, was just a computer simulation. Um, often at this threshold or this doorway into the world of adventure, there is some kind of a threshold guardian or something that kind of gives them a confrontation on their way into the magical world to make sure that they're ready for it. Um, as you can see, Frodo there and his buddies are hiding out from the, the ring wraiths. Um, and Luke is um, just barely has a, a run in with the stormtroopers on his way to find a spaceship off the planet Tatooine. And uh, Obi-Wan does his mind trick on the Stormtroopers. Pretty cool. Um, and this is a quick little video um, YouTube click, which uh, appears not to be working right now. Again, checking it on your own pace here. That was Harry Potter um, actually going into um, onto the train to Hogwarts. He was going to go to platform nine and three quarters. So uh, sometimes the threshold guardian is actually... Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a person or a, or a being. It can be actually just some kind of physical object, a man versus nature kind of thing. Okay, so the next step on this cycle is tests, allies, and enemies. It's kind of like a whole bunch of things lumped together. We're going to parse this out a little bit and kind of get a little bit more specific about um, what kind of allies and enemies um, that uh, this character has contact with. So, uh, let's first talk about it in general. On this way, they generally meet many kind of miniature um, tests or miniature conflicts that they have to encounter. Generally, there's always some, some friends that help them along the way, and there's also enemies, not only the big enemy, but uh, minor enemies as well. So, uh, there we see uh, Frodo with his, um, his band of other ring bearers. Um, and we also see um, Katniss's uh, little fallen hero friend. Um, so the first kind of friendish slash enemy is called a shapeshifter. Um, this is one of the hero's friends, quote unquote, um, whose loyalty is questionable. In some cases, they may betray the hero, and other times it may appear that the shapeshifters only look out for themselves. 
But often, in the end, this shapeshifter does help the character. It turns out to be more friend than foe. Um, we definitely see that with Snape throughout the series. Um, we see that he's more friend than foe, even though it's it's very questionable. Um, we see that with Peta, who can sometimes look like he's out for himself. Baromir definitely looked out like he was going out for himself, but in the end, ultimately helps Frodo in that first movie. And Han Solo, the rogue, um, is often seen as someone who's only looking out for his best interests, but in the end helps um, the good guys, specifically Luke Skywalker. Um, this guy at the top, um, Cypher, he is uh, one of the few exceptions. Um, he's pretty much almost always in it for himself, even though he appears to be a friend. So shapeshifters, they look like they're a friend. Sometimes they look like an enemy. They go back and forth. Oops, there we go. Next kind of friend is the goddess. Um, it's a special friend. In some cases, a love interest for the hero. Not all, not all cases. Um, it's often like a mentor. It offers key advice or helps the hero along the journey. Um, we have the oracle is Neo's um, goddess. Uh, we have the, the fair, fairy queen is Frodo's goddess. We have Hermione um, is definitely Harry's goddess, even though it wasn't necessarily a love interest. Um, we have uh, Princess Leia was Luke Skywalker's goddess, um, who he thought was kind of cute until he finds out that she's his sister. Ew. Um, we also have um, Cinna, who is Katniss's god. Again, the goddess role doesn't have to be necessarily a female. And, of course, we have enemies, which really doesn't need much explanation. Um, we have all the big baddies here, um, from President Snow to the Sauron, um, to he who shall not be named, to Agent Smith, and good old Darth Vader. They're the, they're the big head honcho enemy. So usually at that point in the story or the cycle, the, the main enemy is at least met for the first time. Okay, the next step on the hero cycle is the approach of the inmost cave. Um, that's when the hero really knows things are going to get real. Um, that's the, the, uh, the entrance to the biggest kind of conflict. Hero makes final preparations for the future battle or the future final battle. Um, they do a minor skirmish with some in minions of the enemy. But um, definitely they're getting ready for the big, big battle. Um, Frodo and companions do battle with the Ring Wraiths. Katniss and Rue plan an attack on the careers. Luke enters the Death Star. That's approaching the inmost cave. The next step is the actual um, ordeal itself, the big battle. Um, that's the major, major battle of the cycle. Um, and they experience death in some way, often, not always. Um, they either come close to death themselves or they have a death of a close ally. Luke witnesses Obi-Wan Kenobi's death at Vader's hand. Sorry, spoiler if you haven't seen it. Um, Katniss witnesses Rue's death. Harry battles Professor Quirrell. There's some kind of taste of death at this point when they have a, their big battle. It's not necessarily the last battle of the journey, but it's definitely probably the big one. And this is just a quick YouTube clip, clip of the death of Rue. And after the big battle, the next step is the reward. Um, there is some kind of reward for winning the battle. Um, having confronted death, they receive some kind of reward or something called a boon, which is the same thing. That will help them in their quest. Um, obviously came at a great price. Luke rescued uh, the princess, became a Jedi, but obviously came at a price. Katniss gets medicine for Peta um, to save him, obviously came at a price. Harry gets the Sorcerer's Stone. Frodo makes it to Rivendell, but of course after losing Gandalf, even though he's not really dead. Uh, well, he is dead, but he kind of got resurrected. But we'll get back to that sooner or later. Okay, so now the hero's like, all right, it's time to go home. I've done my heroic journey. I've completed my, my big quest here. Now I got to go home, the road back. So um, 
it's not always easy. Sometimes there is additional struggles or even minor battles on the way back. Um, there's roadblocks, but definitely you can tell that the character is kind of going back to where they came from in at least some sense. Harry heads back home at the end of the school year. Luke meets up with the Rebellion fleet, which is now kind of his new home, his new normal. Frodo um, continues on his journey, but he's actually kind of come full circle in a bit of a way. This one's kind of tricky, and it's often out of order in some way. Um, it's the resurrection. Sometimes it's not always literal. This one's actually quite frequently a metaphorical resurrection. Um, sometimes it's also tied in with uh, the boon. So this is where the hero faces ultimate ordeal in which they have to make a great sacrifice in order to win it all. As a result, they're reborn. That's the key part right there. They're reborn as a true hero, something new. Um, for example, as a result of her beating the games and defying the capital, Katniss is seen as the Rebellion's champion. Luke destroys the Death Star, has learned how to use the Force, and has become a true Jedi warrior. Um, Neo defeats Agent Smith and is literally resurrected from death, um, which is a little video clip there of Neo after getting shot down by Agent Smith, um, gets resurrected. Okay. So, on their way home, well, they're actually, this part, they're, they're back home, they've returned with some kind of elixir. Whenever I think of this, I, for some reason I think of um, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz returning home with some kind of new knowledge. And all of her imaginary friends also kind of returned with some kind of special thing, um, like courage or, or um, brains or a heart. Uh, so returning with an elixir, an elixir, the definition of elixir is a potion. Um, so defeating the enemy, slaying the dragon, and truly fulfilling their destiny as a hero, our protagonist can return home, master of the normal world, as a result of ma mastering the magical world. That's the key there. Um, they learned, because they could master their, their quest in the adventure world, they've now become some kind of greater master of their own world back home in the ordinary world as they return. The elixir they usually bring back is usually not necessarily a real potion, but it's more of courage, confidence, or a new sense of purpose, um, or even some kind of new heroic magical ability. So, boom, we're done with the cycle. But if you might have picked up that each of our example heroes um, were all part of a series, and that's kind of strange and also really interesting. Um, because in the next movie of the series, these heroes actually go through some version of the hero cycle again. Um, so in each one of the movies, which is cool to rewatch, they go through the hero cycle again. And then overall, if you take the entire series as a whole, that can also, you can find parts of the greater hero's cycle or hero's journey throughout the whole arc of the series. So, um, really cool excuse to watch the whole series over and over again, do a couple movie marathons. So, here we are. We went counterclockwise through um, all the cycles of the hero's journey. Uh, something to keep in mind is that not all of these um, points on the hero cycle are concrete exactly in the same order. Sometimes it kind of veers off, but the, the point of this model is to kind of take it in a... In a broad, general, holistic sense that um, the hero does kind of go through these series of steps in order to become a hero and to return back home. So I hope you enjoyed this. You can definitely follow the hero's journey on your own time if you want to look at those uh, video clips. And I'll see you in class for some great discussions and we'll do some kind of closer analysis of heroes as they go through their journey. All right. Adios.